Okay, welcome back to Discrete Math. This is Lesson 11. Today we'll be talking about linear homogeneous recurrence relations. So, uh, what are they? Well, they take the form a sub n is equal to c1 times a sub n minus 1 plus c2, a sub n minus 2, and so on, where c sub i are constant coefficients and i ranges from 1 to k, where k is the number of terms. So why the name? Well, linear just means that the a sub i are all of degree 1, so not um, a sub n minus 1 squared, homogeneous, so basically that just means that a um, sub u n is equal to u a sub n for u and the integers. Don't worry about that too much. Recurrence relation, that basically just means that the next term is based off the previous ones. And constant coefficients, um, all c sub i are constants. So how are they solved? So given this recurrence here, we just substitute um, a sub n minus p uh, for r to the n minus p uh, in the previous um, recurrence. And then we move all the terms to one side of the equal sign. And we multiply through by r to the k minus n to get the characteristic polynomial. So uh, given this first recurrence, uh, we can get the characteristic polynomial like so. So uh, the roots of this polynomial are used to determine the solution. To remember the roots are when this characteristic equation is equal to zero. So if the roots are unique, then the solution takes the form uh, a sub n equals uh, b1 uh, times r1 to the n plus b2 times r2 to the n and so on up to the kth term, where b sub i are coefficients, also constant, that are determined um, according to the initial conditions. So if the roots are repeated, then uh, you have to multiply by increasing powers of n for each coefficient b sub i. You'll see what that means in a second. And if the roots are complex, then you're going to have a bad time. So here's an example of real roots. We have this recurrence here, a sub n is equal to 5 times a sub n minus 1, minus 6 times a sub n minus 2, and these are the initial conditions. Okay, so uh, simply using our substitution, we get the characteristic equation p sub r is equal to r squared minus 5r plus 6. And when we set this equal to 0, we're going to get our roots of 2 and 3. So this means that our recurrence is going to take the form uh, a sub n is equal to uh, b1 times 2 to the n plus b2 times 3 to the n. But since we have our initial conditions, as we figured out earlier, uh, we have a system of linear equations like so, just by performing a little substitution. So a0 is going to be b1 plus b2, and that's equal to 1. And then a1 is going to be uh, 2b1 plus 3b2 is equal to 2. And that just happens when you plug uh, 0 and 1 into this guy right here. And as a result, we solve the system. We get that b is equal to 1, or b1 is equal to 1, and b2 is 0. So this is a recurrence. So an example of repeated root, we'll take uh, this recurrence right here. We find the characteristic polynomial. And then we plug it into our calculator and solve it. And we'll see that the roots become uh, 3 and 2. Note that this has a multiplicity of 2. So that means our recurrence is going to take the form a sub n is equal to b1 times 2 to the n plus nb2 times 2 to the n, because it, this has multiplicity 2, plus b3 times 3 to the n. Then we just get our system here. Uh, this is going to be uh, a system with three equations, three unknowns. So we just solve it using some uh, basic algebra skills, and we'll see that b1 is equal to 7, b2 is equal to 3, and b3 is equal to negative 6. So the recurrence takes this form here. So with complex roots, uh, we can use this system here. Uh, a sub n is equal to 2a sub n minus 1 minus 2 times a sub n minus 2. And we have our initial conditions here. So uh, we get our characteristic equation by performing that substitution, uh, p sub r. And we see that the roots become uh, 1 plus or minus. 
Okay. So that means our occurrence takes the form that you see here. But notice that uh, if we solve it, we see that our roots, that our coefficients uh, become these two complex terms here, uh, i plus or minus 1 over 2i. So uh, we see that the recurrence will take this form here, but that doesn't look too good. Uh, so we can use complex analysis or complex variables to clean it up. I'm not going to do that now. I might do it in a later video. But just remember that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta by Euler's identity. And that does it for uh, linear recurrences. Thanks for watching.